with a scanning electron microscope. There's a desiccator which holds the three or four various sample holders that we have. Uh, the most popular one is this one here, which is a nine pin carousel. And things like silver glue and uh, sometimes carbon tape. Uh, there's a box that we use for, it has tools and tweezers in it. We keep the sample holder in these plastic bags and the use of gloves to minimize uh, the fingerprint oil. And I have uh, here an array of different samples. Most of them are already metallic or already have a metallic coating on them via the sputter coater. But if you wanted to load a sample, you could use the silver glue or double-sided carbon tape like this. And I've just got just a piece of, of silicone that I'm going to put on the, the stub. So this is the sample holder and this is the stub. To apply the, the carbon tape, you just remove the backing and stick to the stub and peel off. Then with tweezers, you can add your sample. So at this point, I could load this sample into one of the nine positions in the uh, sample holder. And to do so, you see it's not fitting, so there is an Allen screw on the side that we can loosen. And now it will should accommodate the stubs. You can load obviously up to nine at one time. So we will load just for today the silicon and these uh, fruit flies that I've already sputter coated and a dime just for a sense of scale. So once we've put those, those samples in, on the edge of each one is an Allen screw. So you can see here for the fruit fly that there's an Allen screw that you can tighten with this. So just a few rounds for each sample. And then I typically just turn the um, sample holder upside down to make sure that they are actually in place. So now I'll turn that upside down. They're all ready to go. So now we can load this into the SEM. This is the airlock. It's how we get our sample in and out of the, the SEM. So you'll see that it's in the store mode. So what we'll do first is hit vent and the light will blink green. Once that stops blinking, we can actually open the, the airlock door. So it's, it's solid green. We can pull this lever to open the door. And now we will load the sample holder onto the corresponding dovetail. So you can probably see that there is a, a dovetail formation on the bottom of this. And you will slide the side with the screw holes this way. So it will slide over the dovetail, the Teflon dovetail. And then I like to hold the back of that while I use the, the arm to screw in the arm to the uh, sample holder. Now we can move it on and off of the, the island. So what we're going to do once we get this uh, back into the, the chamber, we're actually going to open a door and slide this off of this little island onto the other one. So now we'll pull it back in place, we'll shut the door, and we'll hit store. That will bring us back under vacuum. And once that remains solid light, we'll click transfer. So at this point, it's solid. I can hit transfer. We're under vacuum. So there's a little door that will drop down and we can move our sample from point A to point B. So now I just use the arm and I go, I, you can actually look through this window, which you can't see, but we can go from island A to B and now unscrew it or screw it to the left hand side and pull the arm back. And there's a safety click. You'll feel it a click to keep it in place. And now we can hit store to drop the door back down. So at this point we have our samples inside of the SEM and now we'll move to the computer part. Okay, so to start the program it's Smart Sim or Smart SEM. So if you double click that, it will bring you to a prompt to log in.
So now the uh, Smart ICM is up. So typically, if you have this, the, the beam shift or the um, hard front panel, you can drag it to get it out of the way so that the uh, data zone shows. And I will double click off the crosshair so I see just the screen. And at this point, I want to turn the EHT on. So at the bottom right, there's, uh, if you, uh, that will start up the gun. And we can move the sample underneath just by double clicking on the window right over here. So if you look at this window here, you can double click any of the numbers and it will move your sample to that position. So we loaded uh, the piece of silicon in point or, or space number four. So if I double click that, as you can see, it moved. Uh, if we go back to the other screen, you can see that it moved it to here. So now uh, what we can do is the guns ran up. So if you go to the gun tab, you can set your, um, your EHT target by here. So if we wanted to do, say, 7 kV as opposed to 5, then we just hit um, 7 and then hit enter. So that changed the target and that will correspondingly change the actual value. So you can change any of these values here. So um, typically people for SEM just use the standard 30 um, micrometer aperture so the larger the aperture the more electrons you're going to get through so for this we'll just use the standard and then the detectors is uh, right now we're on the TV monitor where people generally like the in lens for uh, I would say things say seven millimeter working distance and less and anything uh, longer than that I would typically use the SESI which is secondary electron secondary ion but we'll leave it on the TV for now and actually uh, decrease the working distance by bringing the uh, sample holder up. Right. As far as the controls go, the keyboard, we have the focus here, brightness and contrast. Above the focus, you can adjust the scan speed. And there's aperture control, there's stigmation, and there's the, the magnification. The other controller controls the, the X and Y, and then also the Z are the, the working distance and also the tilt. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is if you look on the screen, this is the working distance is way too large. So I'm going to decrease that by raising the sample holder. So generally about five millimeters is a is a good value. There's three screens. There's our main screen, the stage navigation screen, and then the uh, TV monitor. So if you look at the stage navigation screen, there's a blue line which should be around five millimeter working distance. So typically, uh, if you've got high pole pieces, we don't want to go above that. We do not want to crash the, the sample holder or our samples into the, the, uh, the SEM. So what we can do is go to detectors, the detector tab, and then switch from TV, we'll go to inlets. Now we're actually uh, looking down to our sample, and the working distance is typically given in the bottom data zone. Right now it reads zero. Well, I know this is not zero, so what I'm going to do is adjust the focus, and the focus will change the working distance values, and I know that's probably going to be about a value of about seven, so if I go somewhere around seven, now I can see our silicon piece is actually in focus. So the working distance is only valid if it's in focus. So if you don't have an image in focus, this value means nothing. So that's uh, something of importance. And then we can decrease or increase the, the magnification. So since this is just a piece of silicon, there's not much fancy to see. But if I zoom in and then change my focus, I can see that I can get a better better idea of what that working distance is. Okay, so we were actually now, we'll move to, let's move to the dime. I loaded the dime in position zero, so if we go to the stage navigation screen, and I just double click zero, which is the center position, and I first need to note, all right, am I going to crash into anything? Well, I can see here I've got plenty of room, so that's fine. I'll double click the zero, <clears throat> and now we can, we're, we're over the dime. The dime is something a lot bigger than what we would normally put in here, so I can zoom way out and we'll actually decrease the working distance just so we can see something. Alright, 
So now we can move X and Y with this joystick here, and we can see here part of the Latin that's inscribed in, in the dime. Another way if you wanted to get the orientation right, so you can see that the letters are written this way. Well, if you're positive, you're not going to crash into anything, and you've got a pretty high working distance. You can click this box up here, the blue box, and then you can draw a straight line. So, and it will. What's what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it so that it's aligned uh, perpendicular. So I will draw a line straight through this text and double click it. And now what's happening is the dime's rotating so that we can read the text in a straight manner. So now you can see that you can actually recognize part of this dime, right? So here's the, the little fig leaf or whatever in some of the Latin that's inscribed on a, on a dime. And here's the part that says United States. So, like I said, the dime is something a lot bigger than what we would normally put. I've also loaded some fruit flies, which I sputter coated, I believe, in position six. So if we go to the stage navigation screen, I can click six, double click that, and it will move to the fruit flies. You can see those there. So again, the X and Y is controlled with this joystick. So I'll move up and across. And there we can see one of our guys that's been sputter coated. And now we can move uh, if we wanted to have finer resolution, we would decrease the working distance by moving it closer. And again, if we wanted to spin it to where it was the correct way, we could do something like that and spin it around. So there he is. So say we wanted to uh, zoom in at a certain position. A, a shortcut I use quite frequently is control tab. So if you hold control tab, the cursor turns to a crosshair and wherever you click is now the new center point. So that's a way to center uh, relatively fast. So let's zoom in on this guy's eye. We can increase the magnification quite a bit and we'll adjust our focus to make sure it's a little better. Okay. So none of this stuff is super fine resolution. We're, we're magnified a couple of hundred times. But say you wanted to go way in. You know, we wanted to keep going way into thousands and thousands of times. Well, here's one of these eyes. We keep going in. So now we're going to adjust the fine structure. Well, if we get up to, say, several thousand times of magnification, at this point you adjust the stigmation. So you use the stigmators X and Y to uh, further clean up the picture. All right, so first we're zooming way in. So there's some movement. So let's adjust the stig. And you can see now I'm adjusting the stig. It got messy. So I'll go back. And there it's messy again. So I typically find I go one way, it's messy. Go the other way, it's messy. And then pretty much hit the middle. And we're getting some wobbling there, which is fine for this. But So there's with correct stigmation the eye of a fruit fly. So that's pretty much it for the SEM. Um, if you The shutdown procedure is just pretty much the opposite. So the things that you typically play with, like I said, you can change the detector from in-lens to SESI to uh, one of the other ones, the ESV, uh, people typically don't use as often. The um, EHT, or if you're under the gun tab, the EHT value, the higher the value typically, the, uh, uh, the better the resolution for hard things that are you know, metals and whatnot. And the apertures, the bigger the aperture, the more electrons you're going to let through. And you can also click on things down in the data zone and change it. So I've got mine set up for SEM things in white and fo the, the FIB part in, in purple, but say if I wanted to change the mags, the mags at 23 right now, well, I can double click that and say I want it to be 500 and then hit enter, well it's going to go to 500 times magnification. Okay, so if we're, if we're done with the session, um, what I typically do to, to shut it down is I first look and make sure that my working distance, I'm not going to crash in anything, I like to lower that, you can decrease the Z with that joystick, 
you can click on the all button and turn the EHT off and then hit the exchange button on the keyboard which is here and that will move this to the home position and line it up so that we can remove it with the airlock that we use to introduce the, the sample. So at that point, when it's lined back up, we can exit out of this and then click yes. And then we'll move to the airlock to show you how to take the sample back out. Upon hitting exchange, the uh, door, the little trap door has already been opened. So we will go across with the arm and get that into place and screw the arm into the sample holder and then pull back. Now we can hit store, which closes our little trap door. And once that remains green, in the store position, we can hit vent. And when that stays green, we can open the actual airlock. At this point, we can remove the, the sample from the arm by screwing it counterclockwise and pulling it back off of the dovetail close the airlock and keep it always in the store position and we can remove our samples.